Hello everybody, welcome back to Beyond the Veil Tarot and Astrology. My name is Candice Marie. Thank you for joining me. I will be your astrologer. Um, welcome back to my channel. This is going to be the weekly um, astro weather for the week ahead. Looks like we're going to be taking a look at today, Sunday, uh, March 20th through Sunday, March 27th. Um, super stoked. Happy spring to everybody in the Northern Hemisphere. And it is the astrological new year. Super stoked to take a look at this energy. Um, that's going to be the bulk of what we're going to be talking about today. As always, we will also talk about the transits throughout the week because boy, oh boy, do things get active <laughs> this week. And it's not just because it's Aries season, but we're going to see a lot of aspects between um, Mars and also Uranus. So there's going to be some pivotal energy shifts. Um, it is not your stereotypical um, equinox chart. It is very active and a lot of things are changing. I remember telling you guys really since the better part of the end of 2021, that the new year isn't really going to feel like it's beginning until about April. And from April through about June or July, we are going to see it just action packed with a number of transits. So um, do me a favor. If you guys like my content, please do hit the bell button below and um, follow me, subscribe. If you'd like to become a member and support the channel, that's super awesome. It makes it possible for me to keep creating this content. If you stay tuned to the end of the video, I'm going to be pulling cards um, and taking a look at what the tarot has to say for each and every one of the 12 signs for this new energy shift for the next several months ahead. Actually, not many people realize that the equinoxes and the solstices, they're not just so much about ushering in new energy. I mean, obviously that happens when you're dealing with cardinal transits, but it's also about setting the stage for what we're focusing on for really the better part of the next three months. And this is a very potent energy because right off the bat, we're going to start seeing that there is this buildup pretty much now, actually, until the new moon that's going to be happening in Aries. It sounds crazy. It's already like a week away. So I'm starting to work on that video for you guys, too, um, and trying to get more of the content out as soon as possible the end of this month. That way you guys are prepared when these shifts start to happen. So you, when we listen um, for the 12 signs, you want to listen for your ascendant. I'm going to talk about where this new spring equinox ushering in the cardinal energy of Aries is going to be affecting your personal astrology. So what is the equinox, right? Or the solstices? These are basically the marking points throughout the year where we start to see um, that the sun ingresses into new cardinal signs. So the four cardinal signs are Aries, Cancer, Libra, and Capricorn. They are the markers of when we enter into these new energies, but also cardinal energy, it's initiatory. It brings life. It brings new energy in different ways. So this is the zero degrees um, of Aries. The sun has entered. This is the astrological new year. Now we have wrapped up what has been um, Pisces season, moving into Aries season. It's a fresh new start. Now for some of you guys, the intentions really are going to be set the better part of the next week to about 10 days both because we're going to see Mercury ingress into Aries and we're also going to see an Aries new moon. So some of you guys still might be waiting. You might feel a little bit of a delay for this energy to show up. I just want you to focus on awareness. Awareness is everything. With the sun being in Aries, we're going to be aware of where our next um, goal is going to be going, um, what intentions we're setting in regards to ourself, our own actions, our personal energy, okay? We may not see a lot of action happen until after the new moon in Aries, totally fine. We're also gonna see a lot more action happen later this year in the spring when Jupiter moves into Aries and Mars moves into Aries as well. That's not gonna be happening for a little bit, so I don't want you guys to worry about it now. Um, like I said, just stay um, and, and be here with the awareness. So the sun being at zero degrees is basically planting a seed. It's giving us the opportunity to go, whoa, okay, fresh start. We need to have a fresh set of eyes. We need to be thinking about what we can accomplish personally. Now, Aries is a cardinal sign, so it's um, very active. It's aware. It's like the baby of the zodiac. It traditionally rules the first house. The Aries also Aries also rules the head um, or anything that's just the head in general, anything from being... Um, like the first thing that you do in the morning, what you immediately do, what comes instinctually to you, um, and how we can act independently and courageously, right? Kind of reminds me a little bit of like the Fool card. Um, just that willingness to like go on an adventure and say, you know what, I don't know what's going to happen, but I'm willing to rise to the occasion. 
So we're gonna take a look at the um, chart specifically. I thought about doing the chart from like different locations, but I was just kind of like, I could do it from my location, but it may not resonate with everyone. So I just decided to look at the moment that the sun um, ingressed into Aries and actually started the equinox, which was earlier this morning here on the West Coast. So I'm on Pacific time, so 7.34 a.m. Pacific, that's what, 10.34 a.m. Eastern. Obviously adjust your times accordingly depending on where you are in the world. This chart is gonna talk a lot about what we're gonna be working with, what the energies are gonna be bringing us really all the way up until June when we see the summer solstice. At that point in time, we're gonna see the sun move into Cancer and it's more about emotional embodiment, what we're protecting within our homes, within our roots, our families. And um, yeah, so until then, really you wanna treat this energy as like, as New Year's Day, right? That's where I get so like hung up about New Year's Day. I don't feel like New Year's really has those resolutions that like really give us the ability to go the distance for the year. That's why I think we see a lot of things start to taper off right around February, March and Pisces season. So if you um, were not able to accomplish some of your New Year's resolutions, maybe you felt like you were stuck in the sludge of the retrogrades that were going on in the new year, totally fine, focus on starting today, <laughs> okay? Um, so this chart, we have an Aries rising, obviously, sun on the ascendant. The moment that the sun moved into Aries, it was like, boom, new energy. Now, whenever we're looking at Aries season, we also wanna pay attention to what's going on with Mars, and there is quite a bit of action here. In fact, for the next 48 to 72 hours, you guys are really gonna feel the effects of Mars. Um, but, you know, kind of wrapping on that, that's energy that's been around for a little while. You know, we have seen on and off all last year, Saturn was in a square with Uranus and Taurus. We felt this pull back and forth between, do we go the traditional route? Do we stay the course? Do we focus on what's practical? Do we accept limitations? Um, and do we move further into the future? And it was kind of at odds playing ping pong with the squares to Uranus and Taurus that radically wanted us to jump into the future, really wanted us to um, amplify, improve our values, improve our senses, think more about innovations when it comes to um, just what brings us pleasure, what smells good, tastes good, feels good, how we're spending our money, and what we find beautiful or um, you know tangible, right? Very kind of Taurus energies. So. Now, coming out of the last couple of months, we had a Mercury retrograde there, the Sun squared Uranus. Just recently, the last two days, we saw Venus square Uranus. Shaking some things up, right? Just me personally, like from some, just some things that I've seen happening like in my life and a couple um, of my clients' lives, I've just noticed um, a real shift around relationships and that there is this need to kind of shake things up or have something new or exciting in regards to um, relationships and going out and doing things and feeling like there's more freedom and having more fun. People are going off and like getting tattoos sporadically. Maybe they're having a wild new hairdo. Maybe they're buying clothing they wouldn't usually wear or colors they wouldn't usually wear. This is very Venus square Uranus. So we can kind of ride the wave of these changes in relationships and preferences by just doing something that's a little bit more radical. The difference between a Venus Uranus square and a, a Mars Uranus square is going to be more reactionary, a little bit more explosive, a little bit more angry, rushed, temperamental, temper tantrums. Remember Mars rules anything in relation to courage, passion, desire, drive, but also our sexual energies, um, energies that are connected to war, conflict, cutting, severing, I have been a victim of Mars the last week. I can't tell you how many times I like nicked my finger with, with a knife. I like burned myself. I'm like, I'm so over these Mars Uranus squares. Please let them be done. Um, and it's really starting to peak over the next couple of days. So if we look at this chart, Mars is at 10 degrees of Aquarius. It's conjunct Venus at 13 and it's building into what will be an exact square later this week. I guess if you have any fixed placements anywhere between 10 and let's say 15 degrees of um, the fixed signs, okay? So if it's Taurus, Leo, Scorpio, or Aquarius, pay attention, slow down, don't rush through things. Don't tailgate people. Don't get angry and get into it with people in line at stores. Avoid conflict at all costs, if at all possible, and just be aware because this can be energy that sets off like fireworks 
Unfortunately, you know, I feel like this chart is a little bit more positive than the chart that we had um, for the winter solstice back in December. I do feel like there's a new opportunity here, but I also feel like there's just a whole lot of conflict, not just because of the Mars square Uranus, but we also see that Saturn and Uranus are still in a slight square. So that's this feeling of wanting to, to break free, wanting to cut loose. Thankfully, it's separating. Um, but just having the sun in Aries in general, it's going to bring out this much more kind of reactionary primal energy in all of us. And, you know, one of my one of my favorite people, one of my astrologers who I was um, um, blessed enough to be able to like kind of know personally and also have readings with and work with the last couple of years. I lived in Echo Park um, a couple blocks away from um, Dr. Michael Lennox. You might know him. He's an awesome astrologer um, and he's also a dream interpreter. He's great. Um, but I remember something he said to me a long time ago when he first looked at my chart, because whether you do it whole sign or placidus, I'm a zero degrees Libra rising. So I have zero degrees on all four points on my ascendant, my midheaven, my IC, my descendant. Um, it's the world axis points. And he always said to me, be very mindful with those degrees. You don't want to fuck with those degrees. And I was like, what? And he's like, when planets ingress through those degrees, it's, it's the most pure form of that energy and it will affect every different angle in the rest of your chart. So similar to how it relates in this chart, having the sun, the awareness, the consciousness, the energy, the ego enter into Aries, we're going to see it affect everybody kind of like going ding, ding, ding. And it's going to definitely affect the world. It does bring about a much more kind of Martian energy for people where we can be a little bit more testy, a little bit more aggra like aggravated and like willing to kind of go toe to toe with other people. Now, it's important in the days of ahead that we're putting that energy back into our goals and our intentions. Maybe you have to go for a run and burn off some steam. Maybe it's important for you to kind of like really focus on your goals and what you're creating and what you're doing. Cardinal energy, it, it's busy, right? It doesn't want to sit down. It, it can't sit still. And we're going to see in the next couple of days, especially when the moon ingresses into Capricorn, that we are initiating new things. We're sorting and sifting and preparing for what will be the new moon on April 1st. So that way we really have a fresh start. So it can feel a little hectic for the next week, basically. Now, in this chart, we also see the moon is in the last degree of Libra. Ouch. Making a square to Pluto and Capricorn. So I don't know. I didn't feel it. I wasn't quite awake yet this morning, to be honest with you. When planets cross into the early degrees of cardinal signs, it always dings everything up for me. It squares a bunch of stuff in my Capricorn planets. I was hoping that today with Mercury conjunct Neptune that... Uh, excuse me, Mercury conjunct Jupiter, I was like, oh, it's going to be a great day. It's going to be really positive. I have felt so under the weather all day. I don't know what it is, but with that moon square, maybe it's like a detoxification, like emotional hangover, right? Um, moon in Libra wants to partner its polar energy of Aries, and it's going to, in the next couple of hours, it's actually there as I'm filming this, move into Scorpio. So it's like super Martian energy, right? Moon and Scorpio, really intense, kind of passionate. Um, also figuring out like what doesn't fit, what doesn't work, um, what needs to be let go of, what needs to be reborn. And Aries Sun, Scorpio Moon, wow, lots of Aries energy. So it starts off actually early this morning with being like, mm, something's out of whack, something's not working. There's some kind of emotional uh, conflicts that are setting up power struggles and things that just frankly don't feel so hot. Now, we also see that Mercury is in the conjunction with Jupiter. It's going to be there today. It's going to be there tomorrow. Um, but it's more kind of um, feminine, right? It's yin. It's receptive. Pisces is intuitive. It's not really so practical. It's kind of fragmented. So dreams are super strong this week, guys. That's one thing that I would say. I feel like um, with the Mercury-Jupiter conjunction and how this applies to the solstice specifically, um, excuse me, the equinox specifically, is... It, it's letting us know like there is hope for the future. There is a need to meditate, reflect, turn inward, focus on our dreams, listen to our intuition, really strong time for anything in regards to, to divination. So if you're into like reading cards, crystal balls, water scrying, anything relating to reading and seeing into the future, the veil is super thin. That's why this is like kind of contradictory, right? We start with the moon in Libra and all these planets in Pisces. 
it's gonna find it's gonna feel a little bit kind of discombobulated um, until we start seeing the sun really getting into some positive aspects in the next week or two where it's making sextiles to planets in Aquarius. Um, then you guys are really gonna start to kind of feel some changes. But still, we're dealing with a, a gangbusters of planets between Capricorn, Aquarius, and Pisces. Certain things in the world are still wrapping up. It's almost like on a personal level, we're like, okay, let's go, hurry up, let's get things started. We wanna see new, we want freedom, we wanna move around, but we're waiting collectively for the rest of the world to kind of catch up. There are certain things with all these landlocked planets in Aquarius and also in Pisces that it's still not clear. We're still not totally feeling clear. We're still not totally seeing things fully functional out in the world, politically, globally, in society. So obviously we can get a little frustrated. Um, one other thing that I would say that we're going to notice that's going to be happening after we come out of the Mars and Venus square Uranus is they're going to meet with Saturn. So a lot of people don't realize is that when this conjunction is happening, the better part of the beginning of April, there is a, there is a new set of rules and regulations coming. Okay. Thankfully, I feel like, um, there is a purpose behind this, right? Aries season, seeing Mars and Venus conjunct Saturn is like, hey, everybody has to level up. Level up in relationships, not just romantic, but also platonic friendships, joining networks, causes that we agree and wanna participate and wanna support. Um, and just all kinds of things that's really, really pushing us to move together. And I think we're gonna see that um, if we are able to become acutely aware of our goals and our desires, Aquarius, we are going to join with like-minded people, literally, physically, or energetically, vibrationally, maybe even on the internet, and we're going to be able to kind of push some of this stuff forward, but we're going to have to fight for things, um, literally or figuratively. This energy does seem very war-ridden, like I'm not, you know, crazy about saying that, I'm not like a fear-mongering astrologer. But when we see Mars and Saturn kind of set up together, it becomes like a very heavy energy. So, you know, I think of, I think I said this on my live the other night, I was like, kind of reminds me of like having shackles, right? It's like iron where you're limited, very Saturn. And in order to break the shackles, you have to come in and hit it with a hammer or you have to heat it up and split it, literally melt the iron so that way it can break apart. That's Mars. So we're going to see that when it comes to money, relationships, values, resources, our personal preferences, our pleasure, freedom is worth fighting for, good things are worth fighting for, um, relationships are worth fighting for, but you guys have to be asking yourself, are you fighting fire with fire? Are you fighting for a just reason? You know, they say that like love is blind. <laughs> And so if you get really passionate about a situation or if you get really fixated on a situation, it can very easily get a lot of individuals in the next week or so very riled up and kind of just lashing out because they feel like they're very passionate about a situation, a person, a relationship, what have you. With those squares to your honest, it's basically saying love is not possession. We can't do that. That's not going to work. Just containment doesn't necessarily mean that we have security in a lot of ways that limits us from being able to have freedom. That's why I really love Mars and Venus and Aquarius. I think it's reminding us um, both with the conjunctions to Saturn, both with the squares to the nodes, um, nobody gets a pass. Nobody's gonna get a pass. When we see planets conjunct Saturn, it's time to grow up, especially in the later degrees of a sign. It affects everybody globally. But when it squares the nodes, it's basically saying for us to collectively move forward, we must learn this lesson. We have to be able to really um, reflect on what Saturn, Venus, Mars themes are. Um, and I hope that you guys are really using that energy of Aquarius for team building, um, intellect, communication, sharing ideas, and when in doubt, communicate, right? It's really important to maybe call up a friend and, and get their opinion and see how, how you know they can help you with the situation. However, I think with some of the squares to Uranus and Taurus, opinions and values are gonna differ a lot right now. And you're gonna see a lot of people who aren't going to agree. You're gonna see a lot of people who are gonna feel angry or enraged because of things that are happening. There's gonna be tit for tat going on. And it's really important, I think, not to practice conditional love. Like that's the bottom line for a lot of this stuff. It's unconditional love. Venus square Uranus. Oh, you know, you have that haircut I hate. I still love you. <laughs> You're wearing an outfit that I'm not so sure about. Still love you. Um, you have wild and crazy political views and opinions. Okay, we can still be friends. 
It's a matter of knowing um, when to cut and dissolve certain relationships with Mars and when to level up and go, we don't have the same perspective, we don't agree, but we can still respect each other and we can still be friends, neighbors, coworkers, what have you. The last several years, there's been so much division because of what's gone on in the world, right? And so I kind of feel like this is that turning point where some people are going to say, you know what, I've had enough of it. I'm not going to be dealing with somebody who is going to be um, ignorant or racist or sexist or what have you. That doesn't work for me. I'm cutting this relationship. It's over now. There are some things that will not escape the Thunderdome of some of these transits. But on the flip side, there can also be this awareness that in order to love somebody, you have to love them for who they are without wanting to change them. And so I think this is going to be an interesting season. I definitely think that it is suggesting for the better part of the next three months, there is some energy that um, does project war, it does project aggression, it does project fighting, but it's also saying, are we fighting for freedom? Are we fighting for those that we love? Are we willing to do the work and the heavy lifting and sometimes, especially like in relationships, like a, like an argument or a conflict can be the thing that really kind of clears the air. It doesn't have to be this make or break situation. But for some people, they're going to realize where their line is that cannot be crossed in this next week or two. OK, you're going to go, that's the line. Don't cross it. If somebody crosses it off with their heads. All right. So um, long Story short, when looking at this, I just want you guys to really focus on what you can do yourself. If you're seeing conflict in the outside world, you want to be an actor and not a reactor. Um, there are some things worth fighting for. I hope you guys are doing it in terms of um, fighting with intelligence, fighting with integrity, standing up for people who may not be able to defend themselves, um, and aligning yourself with groups and causes so you feel like you're actually making a difference. That is where Aries and Aquarius work well together. It takes the courage of the individual to join the group, start the association, go and, you know, start a protest, go to like, you know, county or city hall and actually make a difference. So if you guys are feeling frustrated, find somewhere to put this energy. That's the best advice I can give you. All right, let's get into the week ahead. Once I'm done talking about the transits for this week, we're going to get into the Aries energy for each and every one of the 12 signs. So obviously today kicks off. We see with the Mercury conjunct Jupiter and Pisces today into tomorrow. Um, super psychic, very intuitive. Bust out those tarot cards, focus on meditation, write your dreams down. Um, it is very significant and very prominent all week, right? Because it'll also conjunct Neptune and sextile Pluto. This is going to be very strong for the water signs in particular. Um, earth signs will benefit from this as well. You might actually find that you're just a little bit more empathic than usual, but earth and water are going to feel this um, transit the most. On the 21st, we're going to see that moon in Scorpio is going to come into an opposition with Uranus in Taurus. Ugh. So it's like shocking revelations. It's like, whoa, what just happened? The energy just shift. Um, moon and Scorpio can be a little sensitive. It can be a little reactionary. It can um, obviously um, kind of dredge up a lot of issues with fear or insecurities or whether or not we feel safe. Um, so pay attention for that energy. Moon, moon opposed Uranus is some emotional reactions. It can also bring about just this sense of like, oh, change is coming. Thankfully, you know, later in the evening, we're going to see the moon come into a trine with Jupiter and also Mercury. So it's like those of you guys who are frazzled by this energy, get in some water, stay hydrated, take a dip in a pool. If you're somewhere warm, be by the beach, listen to um, sounds of water, meditation, sound bowls, things like that can be really helpful just to kind of better balance out this energy. Then we're going to see it also come into a square with Mars and Venus. So that is that uncomfortable T-square that seems to keep popping up whenever we see the moon go through Leo and also go through Scorpio. So I do feel like people are going to be a little reactionary, a little rambunctious because of this square. Fixed signs, they don't like to change. So when the moon is in Scorpio and you've got Mars and Venus that are forming a square, and Uranus forming an opposition, there's definitely going to be some emotional upsets that are going to be coming up. Leading into the 22nd, then the moon crosses the south node. So we are emotionally clearing, we're purging. Late in the evening on the, 20, on the 21st, going into the morning of the 22nd, that moon is going to try in Jupiter, Mercury, Neptune. So it's a lot of like, I don't know, I can't tell you what's wrong. I just feel off, right? I just feel different. I'm a little freaked out. I'm a little spooked. 
Just do your salt baths, breathe, listen to some relaxing music, just really focus on neutralizing this energy. Once the moon crosses into Sagittarius later on the 22nd, we're gonna be feeling a little bit more peaceful and it's gonna be a little bit more fiery and feisty. But watch for those temper tantrums, blow ups and volatility that really can be happening the 21st into the 22nd. On the 23rd, the moon is in Sag and it is coming into a sextile with Mars and Venus. So it's positive energy. We're optimistic. It's like, okay, shit happened the last two days. How are we moving forward? What's the bigger picture? How can we make lemonade? The moon will also be in positive aspect to the sun in Aries and Chiron. So it's like we're problem solving, we're active, we're trying to be more optimistic about the challenges at hand, and we're feeling empowered with the moon in a sextile to Mars, Venus, and Saturn. We've got some support coming. We understand that change is on the way, and really it's for the better. Now, then when we get to the 23rd, we're going to see the moon come into a square with Jupiter, Neptune, and Mercury. Feelings become a little confusing, a little murky, can be harder in communicating and expressing. Even if the moon wasn't in Sag, just having Mercury, Neptune, and Jupiter conjunct is a lot of like swimming in the soup. I think once we get Mercury into um, Aries, things are gonna be a little bit more clear. I could see some people being a little emotionally distraught or kind of feeling a little under the weather or just needing to relax a little bit more. If there's one thing I think I've learned about um, the 12th house to the first house is that if you have a stellium of planets in the 12th house, there is this sense of like not always being in your body. Okay, we're not always in our body. There is this sense of um, uh, in the astral or within our auric field or just what's going on collectively. We might be up and about and awake, but we're not all there. It's almost like not having your coffee in the morning. Um, so looking at all these planets that are still hanging out in um, Pisces, Jupiter, Neptune, Mercury, and Venus and Mars are going to go there too. The um, spiritual energies or the energies that are happening kind of collectively very much does affect us and we might be awake, but we may not be all there. So there's stuff going on either when we're sleeping, when we're dreaming, um, cosmically, spiritual energies that are almost trying to kind of say, hey, just so you know, um, the spiritual or the emotional really does affect the physical. So a lot of people are gonna go, I don't understand, this is Aries season, why am I feeling so out of it? Because a lot of people are not in their bodies, a lot of people are not really grounding their energy out, they're not getting decent sleep, they're still worried, they're stressed out, and they haven't dealt with the emotional. There's one thing we're gonna learn this year, between the transits of Jupiter and Neptune and Pisces, making the sextiles to the planets that are in Taurus, the North Node, Uranus, later this year when we see Venus and Mars sextile, emotional energies affect us so strongly. And I think we have a tendency to just go about life and we don't deal with it. We're not acknowledging it, we're not aware of it. Um, and if you're feeling like you're getting a false start in things and you keep trying to start something but it, things aren't just sticking and you're just not feeling totally yourself, don't push it, right? You don't push it, even though it's Aries season. You wanna push it, push it when Mars and Jupiter go into Aries in June, right? I hate to be like that. I know a lot of people are like, well, that's halfway through the year. Okay, but do you wanna do it at a time where you haven't really dealt with everything? Clearly there's some issues that are needing to be worked out, not just with the emotional energies, but look at Aquarius. Aquarius is saying the pieces of the puzzle haven't shown up yet. You haven't really figured out your goals yet. You haven't really gotten right with your goals. And I think for a lot of people with energies in Aquarius and also these this North Node Uranus and Taurus is, are your goals actually lining up with your emotions and what you truly value? Are you chasing paper? Are you chasing the dream? Are you chasing this idea of having all this money and all of this stuff, but it actually doesn't really resonate with what it is that you wanna do? And where can you actually make your dreams a reality if you align yourself, number one, with something that is higher, right? It's higher. Aquarius is elevation. Elevate your goals, elevate your vibration, elevate your awareness, and you'll realize that it's not about money, it's about security. It's not about you know, everything that you can obtain, it's about everything that you can experience. What feels good? What actually bring, brings you pleasure? Is it counting money or is it gonna be having a comfortable environment, having a nice home, having healthy food, feeling good in your body? I don't know about you, but like having all these squares, I started thinking about, about all of this kind of being like, you know, making a good living doesn't always equate to having a good life. And I think that finally, in terms of society, 
we are going to start realizing this. And when this hits the fan, when shift hits the fan, people are gonna freak out and they're gonna go, what do you mean I have to find a new job? I can't go back to my job. Okay, well find something that you really love and enjoy doing because when you follow that, you'll find that if you're really good and passionate about what you do, the money will come. Everything will line up, everything will kind of set up. So collectively, we're gonna have a lot of people who are fighting this. They're gonna go, no, 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 that's not, nope, that's not gonna work for me. Or what am I gonna do without these resources? What am I gonna do without regular income? What am I gonna do when I'm not grinding out, working for a nine to five job? It's time for everybody to get more in their body and start figuring out what it is that you need for security rather than the darker side of Taurus, which can be materialism, you know, excess, overdoing it, super rich, super indulgent, hoarding, right? All of these things. All right. So um, then we have on the 25th, the moon goes into Capricorn, wah, wah. Um, and I only say that, okay, I love Capricorn moons, but I say that because the moon is gonna come into a square with the sun. And so we've got that Capricorn moon, Aries sun, there's a little bit of conflict, there's a little bit of strife, a uh, little bit of like, you know, taking orders, telling people what to do. Guys, we are in Saturn's territory right now. It is heavy Saturn based with all these conjunctions to um, Saturn and Aquarius. Shift gets super real on the 25th. So watch for uh, people kind of being bossy or, you know, kind of shouting orders or things like that. We're coming into the last quarter square on the 25th once we have that moon coming into um, that square. So it's important to really kind of reflect on things and kind of go, it's okay to let it go, right? Power struggles and um, old uh, habits and obsessions and fixations are going to go down hard from the 25th on, all right? Um, at least we're going to see the moon make some aspects and some trines to Uranus. So we're changing things up. We're innovative. We're learning to react to things very different emotionally. On the 26th, we're going to see that moon come into conjunction with Pluto. Um, and you know, it's moody. <laughs> That's the best thing I can tell you. It's moody later in the 26th, going in the 27th, it'll go into Aquarius, um, but at least with this aspect, we see the moon-Pluto conjunction where we're acutely aware of something that just doesn't feel good. There can be a lot of emotional volatility interruptions. We're going to see that conjunction uh, make a sextile to Jupiter, Neptune, and Pluto. And we're just like really focused on our goals. And we have to keep reminding ourselves that in order to achieve our goals, we really have to take a step back and we have to let certain things dissolve, right? Now, um, something else that I would note for you guys, I guess I kind of missed this, sorry, but the exact square of the um, Mars-Uranus takes place on the 22nd, but you're gonna feel it until it hits about 15 degrees. So going back to the 25th, um, you're gonna feel this until about the 25th or the 26th, and then it's gonna start leaving that square, but it's heading for Saturn. So. Venus is enclosed um, between Saturn. We're going to feel it all week long. Basically, Venus is between a rock and a hard place. She's like, hey, guys, I want peace. I want love. I want freedom. I want harmony. I want unity. And Mars is like, fuck that. We're going to fight. <laughs> you know, we're going to have some kind of conflict or it's going to get really riled up. And then Saturn, on the other hand, is literally going to be like the mm, this stops here, you know, and it's about karma. Guys, karma. When we see planets conjunct Saturn, karmic. So when we see planets conjunct Saturn and Aquarius, karma for the masses, karma for society, karma for politics, karma for politicians, karma for government, right? Some kind of um, karmic turning point that's gonna be happening. Mars makes me feel like there's gonna be a lot of people who are gonna be speaking out and acting out and reacting to some big decisions that are being made globally within certain institutions that are governing the world. This is happening for everybody. I do think it's gonna set the stage for um, them discussing and talking about what needs to happen to better the world, right? The sacrifices one may make um, in order to you know, do it for everybody else. It reminds me of a lot of the stuff that went on with the vaccines where they were like, you know, do it for everybody. It's for the best for everybody, you know, do your part. And whether you're pro or, or against vaccines, that's not really what I'm talking about. That's the energy of this Saturn in Aquarius, square Uranus and Taurus. It's the best for everybody. But to me, it kind of seems like this next week or two is a record scratch where it's gonna be like, wait a second, um, 
has this global shutdown been the best for everybody? And are we to a breaking point where we really realize that we need freedom? And we also, you know, Saturn is about accountability. So I think it's about holding certain um, groups or political figures accountable for um, where we're at now and what's happening with the health and the wellness of the world at large and whether or not we're still feeling limited or incapable of being able to come together with other people. Some have speculated this might be the next wave of new potential lockdowns. It's possible, but I don't think it's gonna be for like um, uh, pandemic reasons per se, maybe. I think it's more going to be for humanitarian reasons. I think we're gonna hear a lot more about taxes on meat. I think we're gonna hear about how they're handling and navigating um, debt ceilings and um, taxes in regards to new resources like cryptocurrencies and things of that nature. Will the Fed continue to raise rates? Maybe. I mean, I think with the squares to the North Node and Uranus, there's going to be some real harsh information and realities coming out about um, how much we're going to be able to take out within debt and loans, whether or not we're going to have to have an extended period of um, inflation and other things going up, where potentially the threat, the threat of war is affecting our resources, our energy sources, with the squares to Uranus and the North Node. So there's, there's going to be some uh, rather reactionary people um, as we see these squares to the North and the South Node at 23 and the conjunctions to Saturn. But nevertheless, um, anybody who's got planets in the fixed signs, you're going to feel this. And even if you don't, if you're all mutable or maybe you're all cardinal, you're still going to feel it because it's squaring the nodes. So what's happening for the next two to four weeks is a lot of like rising to the occasion, having to show up, having to speed up our timelines, realizing that we have to take accountability. We have to take action for something in regards to wherever Aquarius is in your chart. So look at where Aquarius is. That is going to be the turning point. The pieces are coming together. It is about us collectively moving out of the South Node in Scorpio, moving into the North Node in Taurus. And some of us are going to have to make some uncomfortable decisions in the weeks ahead when it comes to our friendships, our goals, and our resources. But it's to be able to feel better grounded, to be able to be better in our bodies, especially later this spring. Um, with that Mercury and Pisces conjunct, excuse me, sextile Pluto and Capricorn, a lot of reading between the lines. It's a lot of like, huh, what's going on here subliminally? What are we really seeing? What are they really saying? They're saying something. So information is going to be put out actually from certain, I think, governments or, in, or um, you know, regulators that's like, hey, this is what's happening. This is what we're going to have to do. And it's going to be kind of murky and not entirely clear. With um, Mercury conjunct Neptune, with Mercury conjunct um, Jupiter, it's more emotional and spiritual. Otherwise, information and facts and things that you're getting, it doesn't always make sense. There's not a lot of clarity and you want to really read between the lines. And if you don't feel like something is clear, just wait until Mercury gets into Aries before you decide to launch something, sign a contract or anything like that. Finally, on the 27th of this week, we are going to see Mercury enters Aries. So um, this is about walking the walk and talking the talk. Just be careful with what comes out of your mouth um, because with the sun and Mercury and Aries, it is just like shooting from the hip, right? It's just like saying something, coming out with it. Um, maybe you've been sitting and meditating on something for a little while and you're like, okay, now is the time. Especially with that moon moving into Aquarius in a conjunction to Mars, Mercury and the sun are in Aries. It's like go time. Maybe there is some kind of feeling going on as we're coming into the dark of the moon right before the new moon in Aries. That's like a little bit of getting riled up and getting shaken up and how everybody is getting ready to react or respond. Now with that sun in Aries and Mercury in Aries, it's a lot of what we think, what comes to our mind immediately, um, our manifestations, our mantras, our goals. Don't be focused so much on other people. Allow other people to inspire you, but stay in your lane and really keep an open mind with um, what's going on and what's changing in the world and how that's going to give you the opportunity to really change direction, right? It's like there's so much powerful energy really from the 27th all the way into April where um, I think we can really kind of change the storyline. We can have more self-awareness and, uh, self and accountability. 
I think we're going to be much more aware of our own need to personally heal. Um, I think we're all going to be a little bit more consumed with what's going on with our own personal health as Mercury and the sun inch towards Chiron and Aries, where, um, you know, I think every individual is going to start needing to take responsibility for their health, right, for their wellness, for their fitness, um, and just how they're moving around in the world. So watch for that kind of fierce communication that can be coming in on the 27th. That'll be next Sunday. I'll be back. We'll be doing um, another video about the week ahead. I'm hoping to get out the uh, Venus, excuse me, the um, new moon in Aries sooner. So that way you guys have a little bit of time. So I'm hoping I can do that this week. Um, I'll try to make that a part of my weekly content for you guys. So no worries about that. Let's get into how this Aries uh, energy and how um, the equinox is going to be affecting each and every one of the 12 signs. Please listen for your rising sign. Usually I'm like rising or sun or progressed or moon or whatever. Listen to your rising sign first because this is literally where the energy is being renewed in that particular house. Just something to keep in mind, okay? Because Aries is the very first sign of the zodiac, it doesn't matter what your rising sign is. Some of the intentions that you are setting in, in motion really the next couple of weeks in this area of your chart is initiating the entire next year. How you begin is how you end. So really take the opportunity to do this, especially with Mars going into Aries this year. We only get that every two years, especially with Jupiter going into Aries this year. We only get that every 12 years. Mars is going to be action and activity and courage. Jupiter is going to be expansion, knowledge, and abundance. So this is the time over the next two weeks to go, that's it. This is changing. This is what I'm doing. This is what I'm focusing on. Put those blinders on, guys, and just really focus on what you're going to be doing. Get out a piece of paper. Write out your goals. Don't make excuses. Stick to those goals. See it through. Because by the time we see Mars show up in a couple of weeks, by the time Jupiter shows up in a couple of months, it's going to be like a completely different scenario. It will bring a lot more joy and optimism and expansion and personal abundance. So it's very important that you guys do this. All right. So Aries energy for each and every one of the 12 signs. I'm going to be working with the tarot of Delphi this week. One of my favorite tarot decks. So beautiful. Um, super Venusian. Very pretty. Um, and I'm going to be talking to you guys about where this energy is going to be landing. So listen for your rising. You can listen for your sun too, but the rising is going to be most accurate for this. Also, just side note, a lot of people keep asking me, what do I do for um, the um, for the equinox? What can I do to better manifest? Clear out an altar space, go and get some fresh flowers, burn a candle, write your intentions, burn them, like do anything like that. Take time to be by yourself and focus on what you're creating for yourself. Any way that you can ritualize that and bring in the element of fire is ideal. Um, those of you guys who like to do like kundalini work, that can be really powerful also, just doing a lot of like that breathing. Um, and if you want to get outside, be out in the sun, be out in the elements, work up a sweat, that's an awesome way to do it as well. All right, so Aries and Aries rising, pretty much everything that I said applies to you. Um, happy birthday to my March Aries, if you guys are having your birthday here pretty soon. Um, I'm excited to see how this manifests for you, Aries. I know it feels a little sluggish right now. I know that spiritually or mentally or emotionally, you're still kind of a little bit out of sorts. Maybe you're still trying to kind of figure out what the rest of the year has in store for you, what you're going, where you're going, and what you're doing. I want you to really focus right now on just being active. Move your body around. That's all you really got to do. And if something um, doesn't bring you happiness, if it doesn't bring you joy, if you're not experiencing um, you know, the ability to shine, if you're not able to be creative or be playful or be authentic, don't participate. Don't participate. You will find that in the weeks ahead, just by kind of marching to the beat of your own drum, that you are going to align with other people um, online, other groups, other friends, things like that, that are really going to assist you and really going to support you in the process of this clean, new, fresh start that you're having. 
If you wanna get more active, if you want to um, cut your hair, if you wanna focus on health or wellness or your appearance, now is the time to start thinking about that. Being that the sun is on your ascendant, it's all about what you're creating or what you find pleasure or joy in. So I want you to follow that. It's taking place in your first house and it's a fresh new energy for you for the next three months. I get the King of Cups. So it's literally about um, passion, desire, um, emotional happiness, fulfillment, um, really kind of feeling a little bit more like you have some pep in your step. It's interesting having all of these planets in Pisces right now. And I think it's just about you kind of going, I just wanna feel better. I just wanna feel better. That's all I wanna do. Then get your body moving. Um, be mindful of liquids that you're putting in your body. So make sure that you're drinking things that are going to be healthy. Um, make sure that you're staying hydrated. Make sure that you're more aware of what's going on emotionally. Maybe you're more trying to focus on mastering your emotions and not just shutting things down and just acting like everything's fine. You're still needing to process some of this stuff so that way you can kind of get a hold of yourself mentally or emotionally and feel a little bit better grounded, okay? Very positive card for you, Aries. For Taurus and Taurus rising, this is a brand new fresh start energy in your 12th house. So this is interesting for you, Taurus, because the 12th house is more spiritual. It's more about relaxing, retreating, healing, needing your own private space, needing to kind of um, be in a room, be in a temple, be in a spa, um, and just clearing your mind and getting everything kind of set up for what will be your birthday very soon. Um, so this can be this energy of like, okay, let's wrap stuff up. It can be an energy also of you feeling like you need to go on a vacation, you need to go on a voyage, you need to be in a faraway place, you need a retreat. Um, you may be feeling like there is a lot going on in your mind and you're just trying to figure out how to make sense of everything. I will tell you that it's a very busy time for you ahead with what's going on with some of the career transits in your astrology. Thankfully, you have got really solid friends and you've got some goals that are gonna help you kind of bring everything together. Um, you are gonna get some more rest and recuperation. I think it's really important that you do that, especially coming into your birthday. Some of you guys may find that this is just a renewal of faith in your belief system. Believe in yourself, right? Because it's Aries. So there is this sense of maybe you working more privately, working more alone, being in a room, having meetings, editing things, going through things, but it's going to also give you this sense of being like, okay, I'm kind of hitting my stride and I'm really starting to believe in my vision. Very positive for you, Taurus. Let's see what the cards have to say for you. <laughs> Ace of Swords, um, awesome card. So this is basically especially for you, Taurus, write your goals down. Like do it regularly, make it a part of your routine, be having mantras and things that you're reminding yourself and telling yourself. Remember that Aries is the first thing that you do. So I think that it should be something that you do actually right before you go to sleep. The 12th house is bed pleasures. Um, so maybe it's about having conversations with somebody um, or having meetings later in the evening. Maybe it's about meditating and really aligning with your ideas. Um, maybe it's developing a solid writing routine, speaking out, communicating, using your intuition to guide you, right? The 12th house is your intuition. So there can be a lot more of you going like, I don't know, I feel like this is going to happen or I feel like it would be better if we do things this way. Communicate. When in doubt, communicate. It's going to really help you make sense of the visions that you're having. For Gemini and Gemini rising, this is a brand new fresh start for you in your 11th house of goals, friends, associations. It can be a very busy, very social time for you, Gemini. Um, with all that energy going through your 11th house, I feel like you're gonna be like a bit of a social butterfly. Um, air fuels fire, so it's also kind of cool because that's all funneling into your personal placements. You're gonna be a little bit more of a chatty Kathy than usual, but that's okay. Um, lots of energy is going on also in your career sectors and also in your belief sector. So maybe you're really excited about stuff that's going on for you career-wise. You're connecting and collaborating with people in different places and different spaces. And it's giving you the opportunity to share with other people and network and socialize what you've been building, what you've been creating. 
Now with that 11th house energy, it's very potent for your goals, your desires, um, what you're hoping to achieve for you personally. So I want you to really focus on that in the weeks ahead. Um, you may find that through networking and connecting with other people, making new friends, being more active, like actively calling friends and interacting with them, it can really help you get the show on the road for seeing some of your dreams all the way through. The card that you get is the moon. So it's about using your intuition. It's also, I think, talking a lot about working with lunar cycles. So we've got a new moon that's coming up in Aries. That's gonna be that goal setting period followed by what is going to be a full moon in Libra for you that's gonna be in your fifth house. All about creativity. It's gonna all be about children, desire, passion, projects, putting things out. Looks like this next like lunar cycle or two is gonna be really potent for you. This can also be about dreams, like actual dreams that are coming true or um, following some visions that you're seeing in a dream or intuitively and that things are about to be unveiled that you never expected. For Cancer and Cancer Rising, welcome to a fresh start, brand new energy in your 10th house. Boy, oh boy, is this going to be a fun one. Um, this is especially important for you, Cancer, because in the months ahead, both Mars and Jupiter will go into your career zone. So um, you're showing up in the world in a very big way. Many Cancers and Cancer Risings are going to see that they're either starting own, their own businesses, starting new jobs, becoming bosses, having new titles, um, becoming parents, just something in regards to just having more responsibility in the world, but like you're willing to step up to um, that and really take on the challenge and that it's something that it's worth working for or fighting for. Your workspace or just the work professional sphere in general can feel a little bit more competitive and that maybe perhaps there's multiple people going out for like a new position. Um, it's very possible that you can find yourself in a situation where you're finally launching something personal of yours. You're having to make the time for it. So maybe you're kind of balancing, you know, working your day job and planning on launching something later this year. Regardless, this is a very powerful energy to focus on how you can shine and show your personal talent and courage out in the world, okay? That's for the next three months. Ace of Cups. So it's all about what you love and what you find pleasure in. Um, it can literally be talking about falling in love with your job, finding love at work. Um, sometimes the 10th house deals with your status in the world. So some of you guys might enter more seriously into relationships. Some of you guys might enter into a new work sphere and meet the love of your life. Regardless, passion is the key. And that's so important whenever we're dealing with the Ace of Cups. It kind of says like you have to fill your cup first. So if there's this overemphasis in like working for other people or doing other things to please other people, you're gonna be like, no, 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 this needs to be about what I'm actually really finding pleasure in and finding something that you love. So it looks really great for you, Cancer. For Leo and Leo rising, this is gonna be taking place in a sister sign for you, Leo, and it's happening in your natal ninth house. So if you have been feeling bogged down, like you can't travel, you can't go places, if there's been limitations and delays in education or publishing, if you're going back and forth and debating whether or not you need to find legal counsel or have a lawsuit that needs to be handled, um, that's what this energy is about, especially if you need the courage to stand up for yourself or for other people. I could see that kind of coming up for you. If you're wanting to take a solo trip or if there's just more of you wanting to have a new belief system, right? Some of you guys with Jupiter and Mars going into your ninth house are going to travel places this year travel and relocate possibly also for work or be working part-time in another location. Some of you guys may also be finding that you're going back to school, completing um, an actual degree, or you're gonna be going to a new city for college, regardless of what it is, this is super positive. Like having Jupiter go into your ninth house, Jupiter loves being there, and having Mars go there, it tells me that regardless, um, you're going places, whether it's with your beliefs or literally on a trip. The energy that I get is the seven of cups. You're like, yeah, but I'm confused. Do I wanna go here? Do I wanna go there? Is it gonna happen? I'm not so sure. What do I believe in? If you're finding yourself in a position right now where you're feeling like you've lost the faith, 
Um, I just want you to just focus very strongly because the sun rules your chart on what it is that your personal beliefs are and then what you're gonna start seeing show up over the next couple of months is um, people, places, belief systems, um, more so like things that you would learn or places that you would go or people who can show up, gurus can show up when um, Jupiter goes into your ninth house. That's gonna help you figure this out and help you figure out what you do believe in. So it's gonna help you restore the faith. But right now it looks a little murky and there can be a little bit of a sense of doubt, but just focus on your personal beliefs and what it is that you would like to bring into your belief system or bring into your life or other cultures that you can bring in that's gonna help you um, have better and stronger personal beliefs. For Virgo and Virgo rising, how are you guys doing? Welcome to a brand new energy in your eighth house. My oh my Virgos, there's a lot changing in your world right now. It almost seems like your resources are being um, turned upside down or being kind of uh, changed in some way. You've got a ton of energy right now going through Aquarius where there are changes and transformations in your routine, in your health, in your habits. There's also either relationships that are coming or going out of your life. Now, if you're a Virgo who's like struggling to go through a breakup or issues with relationships that you're having with people at work, that needs to clear out before you come into the new energy. The Aries energy in your eighth house is primal. It's sexual. It's psychological. It, val it, it rules over other people's resources and how you're able to bring more in. So being that it's Aries... There can be a sense of your relationships changing, so your resources are changing. There's either merger or separation of resources. There's money that's coming or there's money that's going. The good news is with Mars and Jupiter going there, you're gonna bring in more money this year. You might bring in spousal support, you might bring in child support, you might bring in new insurance, you might get a bonus. Um, so depending on what's going on with your relationships to others, this can be romantically or even an employer, all of your resources are getting ready to change. So with the sun being there, it's gonna highlight kind of the shadow self of what am I afraid of? What am I afraid of sharing? Where do I need to personally work better on my resources or on my psychological triggers or traumas so I can show up better and more intimately in relationship with other people, right? So that's really important. You might just kind of feel like your sex drive come online a little bit more. There can be a sense of you um, just feeling like um, the tide is changing in general and you can be more prone to clinging on to your bad habits. I would say don't do that. Focus on clearing the energy, detoxes, staying the line, and really focusing on where psychologically you're getting triggered so you can stay on track with some of your health and schedule goals. Five of coins. So it's kind of feeling like I'm being left out in the cold. Um, I'm being cut off from something. I'm not being given enough. I'm not getting enough love, enough affection, enough resource. So this does talk about acknowledging the fact that you might feel like you're kind of tapped out in this area of your life and that you need more, but what are you giving yourself, right? What are you giving yourself? Because you can't be seeking that in other people. You have to give it to yourself because as long as you're handing your hands out going, please give me some more, if somebody is denying you that, regardless of what it is, you're gonna kind of stay in that perpetual cycle of like, oh, I'm never gonna get out of this. I'm not good enough. How am I gonna bring more in? So five of coins, to remove yourself from that situation, you have to focus more on cutting off or severing or moving away from things that are not making you feel complete or making you feel like you lack in general, okay? Watch those resources and those finances, especially when it comes to money owed or spending. For Libra, Libra rising, this is a brand new energy in Aries in your polar house, your seventh house of relationships and marriage. So it's all about how you relate to other people. It's not limited just to romantic love or marital love. Um, I think it's just about clients. It can be about business partners. It can also just be about that energy that you know very well, right? Libra, seventh house is usually your house. So for you, it's not even just so much your relationship with other people, but laying boundaries with other people and where you are with other people so you can be in better harmony and balance with yourself. Important relationships can be showing up for you, not just because of the sun's ingress, but I think more so you're seeing like shadow side self. So there's other people coming into your life that can kind of show you the shadow side of things you haven't healed or things you haven't dealt with. 
Libra and Libra rising, I have to tell you, this spring and summer is big energy for you. Mars is going into your seventh house. It's going to be very action packed, um, especially in regards to relationships. Last time you had this was in 2020. So you want to look back into what was going on in 2020. I believe it was like the spring going into the summer and then there was a Mars retrograde there um, that could have brought very significant relationships into your life. So Mars is coming back. Jupiter will be there as well. For many um, single Libra and Libra risings, you're probably going to meet a very prominent partnership this year. Can be marriage material, can be a really great business relationship, can be somebody who you meet who lives somewhere else, you're talking on the phone a lot, or they speak another language because Jupiter is involved. Regardless, if you want to set the stage for true love relationships and romance, I'm looking at the aspects that are happening in your fifth house. With Saturn, Venus, and Mars showing up there, it tells me that you're getting really serious about finding the love of your life. You're really serious about passion. And some of you guys are really looking to get married because you want to have children because Saturn is in your fifth house of children. So um, as you start meeting people and connecting with people the next couple of months, it's important to communicate what's in your heart, not keep your heart guarded, stay open, and be willing to believe in love again. We get the Knight of Swords. So this tells me you might receive a message. Um, there may be somebody who quickly, swiftly moves into your life very quickly. There's like a lot of back and forth meetings, phone calls, people reaching out to you, people calling you, needing to interact with them. Um, I think a lot of it's about relaying information. So keep in mind, swords is not just about intellect. It's also about, hey, don't cross that line. Hey, this doesn't work for me. Having Aries in your seventh house can bring a little bit of some combative energies, but it's going to give you the opportunity to communicate more what you do or do not need when it comes to partnerships. For Scorpio and Scorpio rising, this is a brand new energy for the next three months in your sixth house. This deals with busy work, getting things done, um, organizing the house, cleaning, checking off your to-do list. Um, it's also about your personal fitness. So you might feel this sudden shift where you're like, I got to go for a run. I got to be more active. I got to organize some stuff. Um, it's a great time to do that. It's a great time also to just focus more on your schedule and what you can change within your schedule so you have more time for yourself or um, if you need to bring in other people to help you like getting new doctors or dietitians or even if you want to start a new workout routine the next couple of months is all going to be about what you can um, make happen with your schedule you're in control so remember if you need to work on something or get something done ask for assistance but it's all to make your life easier so that way you can feel a little bit more productive um, I would say to some of you guys, watch for when Mars and Jupiter goes there. Some of you guys will be going through some new training. Some of you guys may also be um, hiring and bringing people in to help you. Yes, you have to pay them to get the job done, but it might be worth it. And uh, health and wellness looks pretty well. I think a lot of Scorpio and Scorpio Risings are going to focus a lot more on just their routine. And they might be learning like a new type of fitness or like workout routine in general. Dietary stuff is important too because Jupiter rules your second house. So I think some of you guys are going to be um, taking on like a new type of um, dietary regimen that might be very different than what you're used to eating. The card that I get is the seven of wands. So I see you being victorious. I see you being super restless. It's like, I gotta go. I gotta get things going. I gotta do this now. Seven of Wands is an energy that's about standing your ground. And I, I would say that it's about standing your ground when it comes to being like, no, I need more time for myself. No, I need to be able to really um, uh, defend myself. This can be great like if you want to do like kickboxing or like taekwondo um, or anything that's going to be like incorporating like martial arts. It's really good when, when you have a lot of Mars energy in your chart because Obviously, you know, you guys need an outlet for that. So if it's not sex, then it's definitely going to be <laughs> combat sports, right? Um, so just be mindful that you need an outlet so you're not overly aggressive, okay? So for Sag and Sag Rising, this is going to be um, a brand new energy of Aries in a sister sign. Aries is your fifth house. So this deals with romance, having fun, vacations, taking chances, gambling, pregnancies, anything in regards to that. Um, so wonderful energy for you, I think, with um, the north, excuse me, with Jupiter going through there and Mars going through there later this year. 
It's gonna bring up this theme of like adventure, falling in love again. Some of you guys are going to start new creative endeavors. Some of you guys might try um, your hand at being self-employed and taking some of your natural talents and sharing it with the world. You may become advisors, teachers, gurus. Um, you may also become somebody who is just more so I think confident, like your confidence is really gonna come out in this next year. If you are looking for the love of your life, if you're looking to get pregnant, oh my goodness, this could happen. But you may find that there's a lot of conversations about love, conversations about moving, conversations about what you're um, focusing on completing or actually giving birth to energetically this year. Fire trines are super magical. So you and Leo are really benefiting from this energy. And I think it's gonna allow you to do a lot of work with the inner child and just feel like you can kind of play more. And that inner artist is going to definitely come out very strongly. Talking about Leo, we have strength card. So strength talks about like finding your inner strength, your inner confidence, that boost that's coming up for you. It is referencing the fire month. So not just what's going on in April, but also August. August seems to be that turning point. So perhaps maybe that's when you're really confident enough to launch something. You're really ready to see a project all the way through. Um, maybe you've been focusing on building yourself back up a lot in the last several years, and now you're really starting to kind of see all of that shine through. So really positive, focus on the strength, but more so the inner emotional strength and where, how far you've come. I think it's more about how far you've come. For Capricorn and Cap Rising, we have this brand new energy of Aries going into your fourth house. Get ready, Capricorn, because this is all going to be about handling stuff going on at home. This can be about moving, possibly, or thinking about moving to a foreign land or expanding your home or family in some way in the next year. I also get the impression that it's about finally tackling the inner emotional issues that's going on, whether it's drama with roommates, problem with family members, um, finally acknowledging that you had a hard time really emotionally fully letting go of the past. There's something going on there. When you release that, what you have to gain, I think is the opportunity and the ability, honestly, to tune in more deeply to your intuition and to your roots and where you can see that your ancestors support you, Jupiter is going to be going there. Mars is going to be going there. I feel like it's going to be hard for a lot of Capricorns not to move or not to move into new emotional states of being. It's going to be one of the two things that's going to pan out. Um, this energy can be in a bit in friction with you, similar to Cancer and also similar to Libra. It's really pushing you out of your comfort zone and asking you to change. But Jupiter transits or Aries is always really good for fresh starts. So if you've been meaning to move, if you've been meaning to sell a house, if you've been meaning to hash something out with a relative, now seems to be the time, especially because you wanna be moving on to more expansive emotional and home situations. The card that I get for you is the Five of Wands. Looks like you're gonna have to fight for it or through it. <laughs> Hopefully not physically, but this energy does kind of um, suggest that there is gonna be a little bit of you being at odds, potential quarrels, back and forth, standoffs that you're having with people. Um, I do feel like it's kind of showing you where emotionally you've been bottling things up and not dealing with it, and it just might come out. Be mindful that once we start to see these transits that are gonna be making aspects later this year, squaring Pluto in your sign, you'll have no other choice but to emotionally expand and go into new home territories. Now, I guess the positive is that there is a lot of energy that is in Pisces right now, so it's helping you communicate better um, and really lean into these new emotional and family changes. For Aquarius and Aquarius rising, this is a brand new fresh start energy for you in your third house. So this is giving you the opportunity to be more confident, to communicate more, to start thinking about road trips, traveling more. Maybe you wanna get a new vehicle, right? That might be happening for you in this next couple of months, especially with Mars and Jupiter going into your third house. I do get the impression it's gonna be about you writing, communicating, learning something. Do you wanna learn a language? Do you wanna plan a trip? Are you thinking about moving? Do you want your own space? Something like that is kind of really shining through this chart. Air fuels fire, so it's making positive aspects to your ascendant. I think you're getting really clear about your boundaries. I think you're learning to express yourself better. I know this is an uncomfortable period for you. Even if there is positive new fresh mindset, 
You're kind of getting it from all angles. There is a sense of you feeling like you got to go your own way. Some of you guys are quitting jobs. Some of you guys are ending relationships and moving out on your own for the first time or really just kind of finding yourself at peace on your own. And I would say keep a journal, really lean on that new energy of Aries where it's a new way of communicating, a new way of thinking and moving through the world independently and super confidently and authentically. The cards are the four of wands. Looks like you're gonna enjoy it. It looks like you have a busy schedule. You've got places to be, people to see, um, lots to celebrate. This can be talking about parties, gatherings, reunions, um, you know, birthday parties, weddings, you name it. Lots of outdoor events. So I feel like if you are going through lots of changes, you're like, it's okay, I can do things on my own. I'm becoming more independent, I'll be fine. Stay optimistic, because there's lots to celebrate here. In a lot of ways, whatever's clearing out in your life right now is clearing out things that were weighing you down and not allowing you to have more freedom in your day-to-day -day routine, not allowing you to speak your mind. So there's lots to celebrate about what you're letting go of. And even though you may be grieving, I think you're gonna have a good time. And last but not least, we've got our Pisces. Welcome Pisces to all of this brand new fresh start energy for you in your second house, which deals with money, resources, and your self-esteem. This is definitely about the money you earn. And Pisces, I have to tell you, you're one of the signs with these transits going into your second house that's gonna make more money this year. You're gonna feel more confident with the money that you're making. I think this is all about you just being aware of like what your goals are when it comes to resources. The sun traditionally rules for you your natal, what is that, your sixth house. So it's talking all about making sense of time and resources. Time is money. Are you charging enough for your services? Do you need to be charging more? Do you feel like you need to be spending money more on food, health, or routine? That could be happening. In the months ahead, we're gonna see Mars and Jupiter enter into this sign, and you're gonna have the opportunity and have a lot more spending power. That's one thing that I want you to know. You're gonna have more spending power. And so um, I think your goals are, how can I just bring in more resources? How can I be more proactive and having multiple streams of income? Can I be more independent um, and can I make more? But realize that a lot of this also just deals with your confidence and your beliefs. Some magical things are showing up for you. You're deep in manifestation mode right now. I have to tell you, you're gonna be there clear until June. It's important to be praying, reflecting, reminding yourself of your own personal value and all of the things that are coming in that you've been envisioning and asking for for a number of years. But if you wanna set some really potent financial um, things in motion, now is the time to start reminding yourself, I am worthy. I am worthy, I am abundant, things are coming to me, I am healthy, um, and I am capable of taking all of this on, um, and I am open to receive. I accept is one thing that I would say, okay? So the card for you is, oh, again, the Ace of Cups. Sorry guys, there's lots of titties in these cards. <laughs> um, the Ace of Cups, so it, it's basically talking about in, in, in love and embodiment, but I think in the second house, it's what brings you pleasure, personal pleasure and values. You know, the second house works really hard because they want nice things. They want a comfortable life. They want to know that um, it was worth working for. So I think this is also just about you looking at things going, I really love this. I really love this for me. Um, this feels good. I like making money this way. Because your values are changing personally or because you're really shifting the way that you're making money or how you're investing money, you're realizing that you want nice things and it makes you feel emotionally secure. So it's not so much about materialism. It's about how you feel and almost like the gratification that you get from being like, I earned this. I did this on my own. Um, I was able to make it happen. Super positive. Focus on how that's making you feel emotionally. Don't let money be the motivation. Let security and pleasure be the motivation. Guys, happy um, equinox to you. Hopefully it is a very warm and vibrant and abundant season ahead. I'm optimistic that you guys are gonna take on some of these challenges, even in spite of all of the good stuff. I know that um, it's gonna be worth working hard for. Those of you guys who um, watch my podcast, I've got a podcast that I do with the Peace Stealer. I've got a new episode coming out on Monday, tomorrow. It's all about these karmic conjunctions. We went in. We were supposed to make it one episode. It's going to be two. 
We talk for about an hour at length about what these conjunctions to Saturn mean with the squares to the nodes. You don't wanna miss it because I haven't even really talked about that on my channel yet. So you guys will get a sneak preview. This Saturday at 7 p.m. Uh, Pacific, 10 p.m. Eastern, we're gonna be doing live astrology readings. I'll drop the link later this week. Um, if you guys wanna tune in and if you wanna ask questions about a transit or natal chart, it's a great way to do it. It's all donation based. I look forward to seeing you guys. If you're a member, um, you can also cash in. If you're a level three member on getting your reading, uh, please do consider joining my memberships. It makes it possible for me to do these streams and put out content for you guys all week. I've also got courses. I've only got a couple seats left, guys. Like I'm kind of getting nervous and I don't know if I'm gonna be able to open more. So we're gonna be starting this on April 3rd. It's Beginner's Astrology 101. Um, hopefully you can join me. Like I said, I've got some seats left. Check out my links below if you would like to learn astrology with me in an online live um, Zoom reading with a bunch of students. So it's gonna be super fun um, and we're gonna learn astrology from the ground up. So please do consider joining my courses. I have readings open, but um, it's now in May and they're a little bit sporadic. My schedule's booking out as things are kind of heating up astrologically. So um, if you are an Aries or if you are a Taurus or a Gemini, I recommend if you wanna get your birthday reading, book a reading now. Um, I've got them available. They will be live on Zoom. We can interact and they're recorded. I have a full or half hour available options. I also do Saturn return readings. I don't know if you guys saw the videos I put out this week, but I did a video reflecting on my Saturn return, the 10 things that you should know about your Saturn return that I wish I had known or kind of knew. I also did a video on Saturn return in Aquarius. So those of you guys going through your Saturn return from 1991 to 1993, and those of you guys who have um, your second Saturn return going on from the early 60s, check out that video. I talk all about the aspects and why your Saturn return is different from a lot of other people's. Thank you so much for watching, liking, sharing, and subscribing. Um, I really appreciate it, and I will see all of you guys very soon. Enjoy the rest of your week.